So if we move from kind of changing the way we're responding to the thoughts, if we really dive into the thoughts and say, I want to actually change what I'm thinking, that's another set of interventions we can do. I love flip it for two reasons. One, I'm either taking a negative thought and I'm flipping it to find the but at least. This sucks, but at least it'll be over soon. So we're balancing out negativity here. It's great. Now you can't do it for your patients. This is where I see a lot of providers and parents mess up is youth says something negative and then we jump in to give them the flip it. Everybody hates me. Oh, but Bridget called last night. She doesn't hate you. They have to do the work. Your brain doesn't need the practice. Maybe it does, but that's not what we're going for that. Their brain needs to prep the practice. They have to flip it. Okay. Now, the other thing that happens if we can teach their parents to intervene, or if you do that, right, they come out and instead of talking them out of that unhelpful thought, we say flip it. They're going to start catching the thoughts and discarding them before they come out because they don't have to flip it. Great. What's happening internally then is they're learning to recognize and dismiss unhelpful thinking. It's a win win. We need to help them build uh, adaptive self talk. So I talk to them about being a good coach or a good cheerleader for yourself. So what does a good coach say? You can do it. They don't say, say oh, that's awesome. You're perfect if you're not, but they help you feel capable. Anxiety is a terrible coach. Anxiety is the voice inside that's telling these young people, you can't do this. You're weak. You're fragile. You can't handle it. So I really want to beef up that self-talk that helps them feel strong and brave. Ooh, make a list. Let's come up with your coping thoughts. So many, shake it off. Thank you, T Swift, for that one. I can do this. Don't feed the dog. Am I stepping in poo? I've got this. I am strong. But we want to start to do that to really harness the power of self talk. Spin it. So I will, I love that little WM picture is up there because I'll draw it and I'll hand it to somebody. What letter is this? M. And I flip it. What is it now? Now it's a W. Which one's right? They don't know because they don't know what my intention was. And I use that to say, you know, sometimes we just need to see from a different angle. So we're going to reframe this situation. So you got a 97 on that, on that test. You missed three points. Or I got an A+. Plus. I was almost perfect. Right? Potato, potato. But one of them is more helpful. And then find three alternatives. When we are anxious, when we are in an anxious emotional state, our thinking tends to be closed and negative. So find three alternatives. I don't actually even, I don't even need them to be viable. I just want someone to start to make their brain do a little bit of work to open up their thinking. So maybe find three alternatives like um, my friend didn't call me back last night because they hate me. Okay, find three more possible explanations. They dropped their phone in the toilet. They got grounded from their phone and aliens abducted them. Again, I don't need it to be realistic. It's the act of coming up with alternatives that starts to challenge that thinking and open it up to be a little more flexible.